Hello and welcome back to One Trainer vs. The World Season 5. When we last left our protagonist, she had fought her way through a Skyless gym, but had not yet faced Skyla as the terrible loss of Tomoko forced her to leave the gym to bury her. Now, will she be able to defeat Skyla? Find out! Right now. Now, the only thing in particular that I really have to fear from this gym would be the fact that she is going to lead with something that has a dark move, so I am going to lead with Paula rather than mm, rather than Cotton Bat. And then Cotton Bat is coming in afterwards. Haha, <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Did you enjoy flying with the help of the Mr. Alton Gym Cannons? You blasted me into a wall! After your friend killed my Tomoko! No, I didn't enjoy it! You freaking bitch! So wipe that smirk off your face! Thankfully, this one does not have Calm Mind. So... I don't have as much to worry about as I did from the la- It does, on the other hand, have Amnesia. Of course! And my physical attacker, who could have potentially inflicted super effective damage on it, just died! Because of course, she did. Man, my voice is getting really high-pitched right now! I don't really know why! Stop being so happy! Maybe I should Super Sonic it. Oh, that did so much that I feel like I really should heal up to be safe. Like, even at full health, a critical hit of that could potentially kill. Um. I'm going to count on, a no on her not getting a critical hit. Of course, she's using the less dangerous move, so... Now I'm going to have to make it rain again. And uh, she is likely to heal up. She did indeed heal up. I should Super Sonic it actually. After rain dancing. Oh wait, I'm actually faster anyway. Well, that's a waste of one turn of rain then. Yep, a critical hit of that will kill. And I'm pretty sure Hogan is the one who has the Aviolite right now. You know, I should have given that to Polo for this battle. Really, really should have given that to Polo for this battle. <sighs> and there's the reason why I'm not sending out Cotton Bat against this thing. It has Assurance. Which deals extra damage, I believe, if the mm, if it's been hit before on that same turn. And I'm going to assume that Cotton Bat will be faster than this Swoobat. Though, maybe I should give that a try. Hit yourself, thank you! Just go in there with a calm mind and see what happens. Now, don't use Assurance, please. Thank you for not using Assurance, please. Calm mind. I am indeed faster. Well, you are being quite helpful at the moment. Now, as long as my luck just endures. I mean, this thing only has physical moves. Swoobat does not have great physical attack. Okay, if that was a super effective move, then I'm probably set. Let's see now. That took 30 damage. I'm going to assume that I can survive even a critical hit of that. It would take 100 damage if it hit me again after I had hit it first, but... I'm not hitting first. I'm going to set up like crazy before I even dare to try and hit you.
Acrobatics deals more damage, you guys! Uh. Hang on. Just assurance it has. I mean, it can't be out already. It has a maximum of 10 p power points. Calm mind again. Did I just say calm mind again? That was silly of me. Lemonade! Freaking lemonade! Immediately! That said, I think I've used enough calm minds now that I will actually be able to inflict devastating damage with charge beam. I think. I mean, I do also have the Magnet, boosting the power of that move. Alright, the rest of this battle is in the bag. <sighs> I thought this was going to be effortless, but apparently it wasn't going to be quite effortless. Just... let me just see again if there's anything else that I need to be particularly worried about. Worst thing I really have to worry about here is Quick Attack. I think I'm just Charge Beam. And yes, I am aware that I just said I think I'm just Charge Beam. It makes sense, okay? And if you claim otherwise, you are wrong. Um, Confusion has 50, Future Sight does 100, but it takes several turns to set up, so no, Future Sight is a dumb move, thank you very much. Leaf Blade. Hmm. Yes. I mean, Razor Leaf has the advantage of hitting multiple targets, but Leaf Blade is a stronger move and a more accurate move. Right. I think I can safely say I have nothing whatsoever to fear from this thing. Indeed, this battle is over. And that's for Tomoko, you daughter of a bastard! Even though you weren't the one who killed Tomoko, I'm still blaming you! Blah blah blah, blah blah blah, shut up! Oh, it's you. What do you want now, then? They may say it's for understanding one another, but what trainers do you really use battles for is to compete. And they hurt each other's Pokémon. Am I the only one who finds this terribly painful? Whatever, I'm going to talk to your Pokémon. I've been living with Pokémon since I was born, so it's easier for me to talk, to th and talk with them than with people. Because Pokémon never tell lies. Hey, hey Palpitoad, would you like to tell me what kind of trainer Vega is? Okay, okay, got it. So Vega was born in... No, uh, no I wasn't! So Vega was born in Kanto, lives in, mm, lives with his, mm, with her mother, and, and has been traveling through several regions beforehand. Still, this Palpitoad trusts you for some reason. That's good. If every person and Pokémon cared about one another like you two do, I could watch over the future of people and Pokémon without having to liberate Pokémon from people who just use them. Gets is using Team Plasma to search for some special stones, the Light Stone and Dark Stone. These, these stones hold the essence of two legendary Pokémon. It's said that when they lost their physical form, they fell into a slumber and were transformed. Now they wait for the hero's arrival. I shall resurrect a uh, red. I shall resurrect a legendary Dragon-type Pokémon from one of these stones and become its friend. That will show the world that I am the new hero. Everyone will follow what I say. My vision is to change the world without using force. Trying to change the world by force will just make others resist. If people resist, the ones that will be hurt are innocent Pokémon used by foolish trainers. You understand, Pokémon are not just tools for people to use. 
Are you done yet? Seriously? I just want to go and get some stuff. Although, if I'm not mistaken, before that, I'm going to have to fight Charon again. So, by the way, this is a really frustrating way to talk. I should stop doing this. Now, I suppose I could just go and face Charon right now. But two of my Pokemon are only one level away from evolving. Okay, Paolo is two levels away, but still. So, I am instead going to go and level them up. So that they will evolve. You know, Bulbapedia claims that a Pokemon that's infatuated with another Pokemon will, mi will be unable to attack 50% of the time. Somehow, I doubt those statistics considering how long that battle just now dragged on. I mean, I mean, sheesh. I only needed three attacks in order to take out that Odino. And I'm pretty sure I attacked like 15 times before I managed to get in those three hits. Why? The level 100 shiny Arceus! That is absurd! And obnoxious! And obnoxiously absurd! Right, it is time for Paula to become her final form! Congratulations! Your bowl I've evolved into Seismitoad! Hmm. Acid. Yeah. No. Ah, oh, come on! Ah, oh, well, at least with that, anything he fights will be. will get him over the edge. Yeah, I don't want to kill one of these. Oh well, it's a dude. It's not Tomoku in any way, so whatever. <laughs> and now it is time for Hogan to become way stronger than he currently is. Assurance. Hmm. Actually, could be useful for coverage, I suppose. Or fighting dark mm, ghost types. What? Hogan is evolving! And now he will finally look somewhat less derpy, because man, does that second stage sprite not work very well for him. Not that I'm actually a huge fan of how Embor looks either, but at least it looks decidedly less dumb this way. So, congratulations! Your firefighting star starter reached his final form, unlike last time! And then, I suppose, I can go and face Charon after I've healed up. Now, he will lead with his bird, so I shall lead with my bird! Vega, since we both hold the jet badge now, let's see which one of us is stronger. Don't you ever get tired? You know, I beat you every single time, and for some reason you are just as surprised every single time. And it's always the same excuse! Just find someone else to fight, sheesh! Really sad thing is, I'm pretty sure it's generally agreed that Bianca actually has the stronger team of, out of these two. That like, Charon's team is kind of unbalanced and she is just generally better. <laughs> Although of course, in this case, Charon is the one who has the water type starter, whereas Bianca has Servine, which, well, I suppose by the next time we fight it will probably be superior, but which is 
arguably the worst starter ever when you don't take when you don't take its hidden ability into account. Because it's like it's kind of similar to Meganium in that it doesn't really have very good offensive stats and it's just got a very shallow move pool, but at least Meganium is is somewhat tanky and can work in that regard. Whereas Superior doesn't even have that. It has speed going for it, which is oh so useful when you are not an attacker or you don't have good attacking stats at all. Again, unless you have the hidden ability, but the starter never has its hidden ability, so it will never get to take advantage of the amazing contrary. And that was a completely off-topic rant about a Pokémon that I will never use in this game. I mean, maybe I will be mm, will have to use it in the sequel, but I hope not, because that second game starts off on a very harsh note, and if you don't have a good starter for that, then you then that game might just end right away. So yeah. As far as the as far as the ground water types go, Seismitoad is hardly the one I like the best in terms of its appearance, at least. But it is useful, so I am okay with it, even if it isn't the prettiest thing in the world. It occurs to me. The only Pokemon of mine that's like in active duty that didn't partake in this battle was Hogan. Why didn't I use Hogan instead of Komori against mm, against his Lipard? Then I would have been able to get my entire active party, and yes, Vanessa doesn't count, in on this battle. Leaf Blade. Battle over, that was difficult. So what's the next level limit? I'm going to assume it's somewhere in the range of 40. So, uh, Komori might already be getting close. That was a fine Pokemon battle. I'm happy to see you are both growing as trainers. If it isn't the champion, Alder, I'm weak, so I lost. And honestly, it bothers me when you call it a fine battle despite that. Oh, honestly, Charon. Just accept the compliment without the stinging remark. I've asked you this before, but what do you plan to do after becoming strong? If I get strong and become a champion, that will be the reason for my existence. I want to prove that I'm really living. Hmm. You remind me of Marshall. Of course, having something you want to become is important. But what is even more important is what you do with your newfound power. Anyway, take this. Here, you too. Why, that is very nice of you, Mr. Alder, sir. If you use the move Surf, you can travel over water. I shall see you again, young trainers. Don't forget about the needs of the Pokémon at your side. What do, what I do with my power? I don't know that answer yet. First, I want to become a strong trainer so everyone will acknowledge that power. Vega, next time I will win. No, you won't. I mean, seriously. Whatever makes you think that you will win the next time. Anyway, I just got a super useful water move. I am going to teach my super useful water move to my super useful water type. I mean, just get rid of Bubble Beam, obviously. Surf is just better. And now that I have that, it actually opens up a certain new area where I might get something awesome, hopefully, maybe. But first, must heal. And also, over in Twist Mountain, there should be some stuff I can get, but... You know what? I'm more interested in going to the other place and seeing if I can get something neat. Also, it occurs to me, I'm pretty sure I have the TM for False Swipe by now, or do I? I could have sworn I got that. 
Excuse me, then I gotta double check when the TM for Fold Swipe is even obtained, because I think it's at least possible to obtain by now. Ah, I get it from the professor if, in, in, back in my hometown if I've seen at least 25 Pokemon, which I have. So I guess I'm going there then. And come to think of it, Surf also means that there are some new areas around there that I can, uh, that I can access. Where I could get some st some stuff that I was hoping to add to my party eventually. So yeah. I've seen 81 Pokemon. That means I'm pretty sure I will be getting multiple things. First false swipe. And I think there's something else afterwards too. Yes. Eh, that's less that's less awesome, but still. Now, I have false swipe. I am going to teach it to Komori if I can. I can. And now to go back to where I was so that I can get to the thing that I was actually going after. How is it that, mm, that surfing Pokemon are so pitifully weak when you encounter them? I mean, I had to defeat a level 34 gym leader in order- a level 35 gym leader in order to get to this point. And you throw a Pokemon at level 10 at me. That is dumb. Well, I am now going to use repels so as to slightly increase my chance of getting the cool thing that I want to get in here. Pretty sure that the things in here are at level 31, so... It, yeah, I can still encounter things now, will it? That's not the thing I'm looking for. Trying some more. Come on, give me the right thing. Yes! Awesome! And I already had some names in mind for regardless of what its gender was. I mean, I was actually hoping for a dude so that I could call it Smaug, but I didn't get a dude, so... Instead, I'm going to go on a very weird tangent from that. Now... False swipe! Oh, that didn't do much. That didn't do much at all. Right, and I think to be on the safe side, I should probably heal up before I can, before I try and do some more false swipe and then throw a ball at this thing. Thankfully, I have a ball that should be very efficient for this situation and which also matches its colors nicely. Oh, this thing also has false swipe. Right, and now the time has come to throw a ball at it. And I'm pretty sure that the odds are are so high that it will mm, be caught that this one ball should do it, I think. Now, as I was saying, if it was a dude, I would have called it Smaug. And you know who is who voices Smaug? Benedict Tum Cumberbatch. You know who else Benedict Cumberbatch mm, plays? Sherlock Holmes. You know, you know one of... Like, uh, in any case, I am naming this thing after Irene Adler from Sherlock Holmes. You might think that's a super weird tangent to go on, because it is, but that is what her name is now. And that's one of the things that I might want to actually have on my party, but at the same time... Dragon types typically aren't super strong before they before they reach their final form. At least I'd want it to reach its second form before I could actually try and use it. Hang on, when does it evolve to its second form? 
level 38. So after some level grinding she should be up to par. But for now I dare not use her. Now... Routes 17 and 18 have been opened up for me. For you see, now I can swim out here! And hang on, how is my current supply of, of netballs? 11. That is quite sufficient. But I also want to just double check what it is I will be up against. Oh, whatever it is, mm, I will... There's only one possible surf encounter on the, on that route. And they are really weak and really low level. So it's unlikely that they will have anything to deal terrifying damage on me. Very unlikely. So... I'm still on route 1, so... Definitely still on route 1, because Basculin does not show up on route 17. Eh. And now I'm just experiencing the thing I was complaining about right at the start of the game. That noticeable lag before you, before you actually get the encounter music and transition into the battle screen whenever you run into a Pokémon. And that seemed particularly extreme. Also, two basculins for two steps. Are you kidding me? Oh. I was thinking I was going to try and avoid this person, but I couldn't avoid this person. So, how bad are you going to be? Uh, I have bad memories of dealing with you guys from like a half an hour ago. Cotton Bat, go in there and hit it with an electric move. And don't use Amnesia opponents for Swoobat. Hmm. Actually, in a way, kind of worse. Well. Hopefully the charge beam will still deal devastating damage. Not quite devastating enough, however. And I did not get a special attack boost from that charge beam. Who'd have thought that swoo bats would be like one of the most terrifying things to face? Wait a minute. How did that do more damage? Or pretty much equal damage at least. Oh well, I ain't complaining. Right, this is a gate. And there's nothing on the bulletin board. Huh. Nothing of interest, you say? I disagree. There are things of interest beyond here. Such as new Pokémon! And some new areas, where I believe I could also get some new items of interest, so... Your assessment that there is nothing of interest here are, is completely wrong. Right, there is a 100% chance that this will be a Frillish. Level 5. Yeah, if I ever want to add you to my party, that's gonna be a... Oh, F, it's a ghost type, I forgot. Oh, well, it's still level five. Netball. It should be sufficient, I think. It was indeed sufficient. Now, its name shall be... You know what? Just because it's pink and frilly, it kind of reminds me of Madoka. From Puella Magi Madoka Magica, Magica. Which also happens to be my favorite anime, but that's kind of irrelevant to this point. So... That frillish now has one hell of a name to live up to. 
Now, let's see if I can make it to Route 18. Because I remember these currents around here being a bit of a pain. Ah, toxic. Could be useful, I suppose, maybe, at some point. Depending on what my final team ends up looking like. I mean, I'd rather give I'd rather give Paula Toxic than Sludge, so... Or whatever that other move that she got was about to get was. Hmm. I think I got on the wrong current. That's only going to be useful if I somehow manage to get a Pokémon that isn't Unova native. Or I think it's catchable in the post game, but that doesn't really matter now, does it? We have reached the place known as Route 18, I believe. Hang on, have we reached the place known as Route 18? Yes, we have. So, here there should be things I can catch, and that's almost definitely going to be an Audino, so going to ignore that. Because I don't want to catch an Audino. There are other cool things here that I can, in fact, get. Although there's also a few lame things that I've already gotten, so let's see what I will get here. Excellent! That was exactly what I was hoping for! Now, Komori, full swipe this thing into submission! Or at least full swipe it once more, because I'm, I fear that maybe it will have some sort of recoil moves. But so far it's just using moves that aren't very effective. I'm just going to throw a ball. Right. And your name shall be... For some reason, I'm thinking of Vegeta. It might not make a whole lot of sense, but that was the name I just came up with. That could be a potential replacement for Tomoko, I suppose. Now to just explore this place, because I can. Hmm... I don't think I'm allowed to take that egg, because I already got Vegeta. Vega has avenged Tomoko, or something, and then gotten several new cool Pokémon. Will her luck last? Find out next time.